Hello, Algebra 1 students. We are ready for Chapter 10, Section 2, Simplifying Radical Expressions. So, a radical expression is an expression that has a radical in it or that has a square root. So, radical expressions contain square roots. Let's review. This symbol is the square root symbol, also known as the radical. That's the formal name. The number underneath the square root symbol is called the radicand. When you're simplifying radical expressions, you need to factor out all perfect square factors. So if you have perfect squares, you need to factor those out. Here is a list of the most popular perfect squares, <clears throat> starting with 4, then 9, 16, 25, and so on. So when we need to simplify a radical expression like the square root of 52, we try to think of multiples of 52. Now if you don't immediately know that it's divisible by 4, then you might say 2 goes into 52 26 times. And then you'll say 2 goes into 26. So you have the 2 that you took out originally. And then 2 times 13. Oh, 2 times 2 is 4. So if you didn't think of 4 times 13, then whenever you have two numbers, that would be 2 squared, you lasso those out and bring them outside the radical and leave 13 underneath. So that is the simplified form of the square root of 52. Either take the square root of 4 or realize when you have two twos, you take the square root by pulling one out. A couple of things about simplifying radicals. You cannot leave any perfect squares underneath the square root, and you also cannot have square roots in the denominator. So rule number one, no perfect squares left. And rule number two, no square roots in the denominator. Don't forget those two important rules. When there is a square root in the denominator, we have to rationalize the denominator. We rationalize the denominator by eliminating the radical from the denominator. And to do this, we must multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same factor. So stay tuned, I'll come back to this point uh, with an example in just a moment. So let's go ahead and get our terms. The next term is conjugate. A conjugate is a binomial, which means it has two terms, and it contains a radical. So for example, if I have a plus the square root of b, the conjugate is a minus the square root of b. So they both contain square roots and they're conjugates of each other. If I had originally given you a minus the square root of b, then a plus b would be the conjugate. And again, we will use this to rationalize our denominators. I will show you that example in just a moment. So let's review how to multiply when you have the square root of a times b. It's the same thing as the square root of a. So they gave us the example of the square root of forty of four, excuse me, times the square root of nine, which four times nine is thirty-six. The square root of thirty-six is six. You could have also looked at it as the square root of four times the square root of nine. And we know the square root of four is two, and we know the square root of nine is three, and so therefore we get six. So it does not matter, but Breaking it apart like this and taking the square root of 4 and the square root of 9 each independently will help on the next page. So flip on over. To simplify the square root of 500, it's easier to think of it as 5 times 100. And we know the square root of 100, that's 10. And we leave the square root of 5 underneath. So, so go ahead and think of multiples of 500 or in other words, factor um, 500. Now 243, since it ends in 3, let's start with dividing by 3. 3 goes into 243. Let's see, that'll be 70. Wait, it goes 81 times. 81. Oh, yeah. 243 divided by 3 is 81. And I know the square root of 81 is 9. And so I am finished at that point.
<clears throat> now, had I thought of dividing by 9, then I would have ended up with 27, and then I would have had to, to break down 27. So sometimes it works quickly, and sometimes you have to keep thinking of numbers. All right, the square root of 10 times the square root of 20. Well, <clears throat> we could break down 10 as the 2 times 5. I don't know if that's going to help me or not. So let's first uh, break down 20. The obvious is 2 times 10. The square root of 2 times 10, hey, that's the square root of 10, and that's the square root of 10. So we really have 10 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 10, which would be the square root of 100. So whenever you have two of them, you bring one out, and that leaves us 10 radical 2. Or if you went ahead and made that the square root of 200, you might have said 2 times 100. Whoops. 2 times 100. And we know the square root of 100 is 10 on the square root of 2. So there's always more than one way to tackle every problem. Now let's talk about number 4. Here we have 4 outside the radical sign. 75, I immediately think of 3 times 25. I only have one Q, but then I have R three times. So as I'm taking the square root, remember, if you know the square root of 25, you bring that out, so the 5 comes out. And here I have two R's, so I'm going to bring out one of the R's. So I call it lasso them out. When you have two of any number under a radical, you can pull it out. So this gives us 20 R, that's 5 times 4 is 20 R, on the square root of 3. Now remember, I took care of the 25, and I took care of two of the R's. So I have a Q and an R left over. Now this is something I don't know if we've talked about before. We need to put absolute value around the R because remember, when I take the square root of a number, I don't know if it was the positive or the negative number that got squared because a negative 3 squared makes a positive 9. A negative 5 squared makes a positive 25. But because there are three R's, I know that R cannot be negative because that would make uh, an illegal radical. You can't have a negative underneath your square root symbol. So you always put absolute value whenever it's an odd number of exponents. If you need more explanation, please look in your book on page two, uh, 229. There's a wonderful explanation in the middle of the page. But I'm, for the sake of time, going to keep going. But remember, odd exponents, you need absolute value. Now let's talk about number 5. This is what I'm talking about. You need to rationalize your denominator. We have the square root of 27 over the square root of m to the 5th. And you cannot have a square root in the denominator. It's against the rules. So we need to multiply by the square root of m to the 5th over the square root of m to the 5th. Now remember, that is equal to 1. So I've not changed any values when I multiply these. I'm multiplying times 1. But watch what happens. This gives me the square root of 27, m to the 5th, over, and whenever you multiply the square root of a number times the square root of a number, that's the square root of m to the 5th squared, I'm going to just have m to the 5th. So I'm finished with my denominator for now. And now I need to concentrate on simplifying my numerator. So 27 is 9 times 3, or 3 times 9, and then I'm going to have 5m's. That's an odd number, don't forget, over m to the 5th. So I'm ready to lasso out what I can pull out of there. I know the square root of 9, that's 3. Wherever I have 2m's, I can bring 1 out. Wherever I have 2m's, I can bring 1 out. So I have left here, underneath the radical, the 3. I took care of the 9, and I have 1m left, and I took care of those. So out front, I have 3m squared. Now, I don't have to put absolute value here, because if m is negative, I am squaring it and turning it positive. So m squared does not need an absolute value symbol. 
So we have 3m underneath over m to the fifth. And since this is multiplication, I can simplify and have 3 on the square root of 3m over m to the third. Now where did those two m's go? I canceled these with two of those. So take away two and you have three left over. We'll keep practicing those. If that seemed a little bit confusing, you can rewind and watch me do that again. All right, for example number six, I need to um, rationalize my denominator. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. So the conjugate of six minus radical eight is six plus radical eight. And I don't have the right to just multiply the denominator. I can't change my problem just because I don't like it. So I have to very carefully choose to multiply by the conjugate, which will get rid of the square root in the denominator, but yet I'm multiplying times a value of one. Anything over itself is equal to one, so I have not changed any values here. So watch what happens when we multiply. The six has to, I mean, excuse me, the seven has to be distributed. So seven times six is 42. And seven times the square root of eight is seven on the square root of eight over. And what we have done to our denominator is made a perfect square. Six times six is 36. Six times positive uh, radical eight is positive six radical eight. Negative radical eight times six is negative six radical eight. And then the negative times the positive is negative square root of 64. And I wrote it all out, but I really want you to get to where you can do this quickly and notice the perfect square. So this is 42 plus 7 over the square root of 8, or on the square root of 8, all over 36 minus 8, because these numbers cancel and the square root of 64 is 8. And you should have been able to go from... Uh, given us the conjugate over itself straight to this situation and your answer is 42 plus 7 radical 8 all over 28. Now 7 goes into 42 and 7 goes into 28 so let's factor out a 7. That leaves us with 6 plus radical 8 over 28 and our final answer is 6 plus radical 8 over 4. And that is your final answer. I am going to have to leave a few for you to practice. On Hopefully simplifying will come, uh, these types of problems will come more naturally for you. When we get down to quotient properties, let me get you started with the first ones here. Um, you'll need to multiply by the square root of 27 over the square root of 27 here, which gives us the square root of 2 times, that's 3 times 9, over 27. And I know the square root of 9, that's 3. And the square root of 6, I can't do anything with. And 3 and 27 simplify, so it's the square root of 6 over 9. And that is your final answer for number 1. I would love for you to go ahead and do number 2. And then Multiplying by the conjugate would be 3 plus the square root of 5. And remember, I have to do the same to the top and the bottom to keep it equal to 1. So distribute your 4, and you get 12 plus 4 square root of 5. And then it's a perfect square of 9. My middle terms will cancel, and I'll have minus 5, which is 4. So factor the 4 out of the top, and you have 3 plus the square root of 5 over 4, which cancels, so 3 plus the square root of 5 is your final answer. Go ahead and practice number 2 on your own, and I will see you tomorrow.